All right, everybody, this is Mr. Gonzalez talking. I hope you can hear me well. I'm about to record a very long video on a graphing piecewise function, so hopefully everything's recording. But I know that we've been needing a little bit of extra help on this, so I'm going to do my best to try and explain as detailed as I can, but also um, make this as simple and uh, straightforward as possible for you guys, because I know that there's a lot going on here. And so I'm just going to go ahead and jump right in, okay, and, and show you some tools and uh, some ways you can go about this. So I'm going to click on level two because if you can do level two, you can do level one. And uh, so let's look at a problem here. We're going to be graphing. Oh, this is super interesting. Um, I won't even need a, another tool for this. This one's pretty straightforward. Anytime you have f of x equals two, like a number like that, it's just going to be a horizontal line. Uh, I'll explain why in a little bit. But also, I know that we're only doing lines for level 1 and level 2 because I don't have any x's to the power of 2 or x's to the power of 3 or anything like that. So what this is saying here, f of x equals 2, that's just, you can think of f of x as y. So if y is equal to 2, on the graph, y equals 2 is right here. But all of these points right here also have a y value of 2. For example, if I click on this point here, that's negative 4 and then the, for x, and then the y value is 2. So all of these here, all of these points, horizontal points, have a y value of 2. So the line f of x equals 2 is this horizontal line. But they only want us to graph everything except for when x is 3. So what I would do, um, first I'm going to need, yeah, I'm going to need a line. So I'm going to go like this, but it goes on forever. So I have to click that forever. There you go, forever and forever. But they don't want us to include um, x when it's equal to 3. So that's negative 3. It's going to be over here. This point right here, they don't want that included. They don't want x to be 3. So we're going to have to put that, make that open. So I'm going to click open circle and then right there. Now we're not including that, okay? And then for the second part, f of x is equal to 4. So they're just saying y is equal to 4. So y is equal to 4 is all of these points here, but they only want it for x equals 3. So we're going to do a closed circle for 4, 3 right here. So it, for the second piece, we don't want the whole line because we just want it when x is 3. And that's going to be it. So I know that not every problem you see is going to look like this. We're going to do, we're going to look at one that looks a little more familiar to something you might see, okay? Let me see how we're doing on time. That was about three minutes. So let's look at another problem. Um, well, I'm going to skip this one because we have the same sort of thing going on with the domain here where we don't want to include 3 so we're going to put an open circle there and we do want to include 3 for this one so uh, this isn't very helpful other than other than this is going to be a line um, maybe I can do this real quick well we know we know this one here we just graphed this second part y equals 4 x equals 3 maybe I can do that really quickly 4, x equals 3, so that's going to be right there. Now this x minus 6 line, you might not know how to graph it. Um, so you can make a table, or you can just use delta math. Really what this is saying, if you remember y equals mx plus b, it's saying that the start is at negative 6, and the slope is 1, so you go up 1 over 1. But anyway, um, so what I might do is, I might start at negative 6. I'm going to need a line, negative 6. Um, and then up one over one, up one over one, okay? And then this is a line, so it goes on forever. I click that twice, but I don't want to include a three, so that has to be an open circle. So at x equals three is right here, so that has to be open. And also I graphed this one wrong, huh? That one should be, that means that that should be three, four right there, okay? So how did I know how to graph this? Well, I just have experience graphing straight lines. You can make a table. You can check all these points. What happens when x is 0? 0 minus 6 is negative 6, so we get y equals negative 6. What happens when x is 1? 
Well, 1 minus 6 is negative 5, so it'll be 1, negative 5, which is right there. What happens when, we could try any of these here. All you need is two points, but we can try any of these. What happens when x is 8? 8 minus 6 is 2, so you end up at 8, 2. Okay, so that's one way you can graph it. Another way you can graph this uh, line is what I'm going to suggest many of you do um, is use a graphing calculator, desmos.com. Okay, and I would just uh, input the function there. The piece was equal to x minus 6. Okay, and then you can take any two points from here and graph them. Um, but again, they did not want us to include x equals 3, so that's why I put an open circle there because at 3 we get negative 3, but we don't want to include that. Okay, I think we're like at 5 minutes now. Let me see. We're at 550. Okay, so. Uh, Oh, did I submit my answer? Here we go. Yes. You are not properly signed in. Oh gosh. Okay. Well, anyway, it's going to make me sign in again. Let me do this quickly so this video isn't super long. I know I'm talking really fast, so please feel free to go back and pause the video or rewind it wherever you need the help. Um, I feel like this next problem is going to be the, the most helpful. So let's go ahead. I'm going to skip this one for now. I just did it and I don't want to graph it again. Oh, that's pretty much what I had though. Okay. Um, uh, we just did this. Okay, this is more interesting here. So let's spend about five minutes on this. Um, okay, so again, uh, if you don't know how to graph all of these, you can just make a table and, and see what happens when x is zero. It's going to be zero. What happens when x is 1, you'll get negative 1. But what I would recommend is using this graphing calculator. So what I'm going to do first is I am going to write f of x is equal to negative x to get that first line. Okay, so f of x is equal to negative x. So this is a full line. We're not going to graph it yet. Okay, um, they only want the piece. So if, if you read this, the, uh, it this is saying that x is between 1 and 5. We include 1, but we don't include 5. Actually, you can um, write this in over here, maybe on the next line. You could just go 1 less than x less than 5. And the, that'll tell you what piece you need. So you, you guys see this piece right here in the green? The line is, is this. But you just want the piece in the green. So I want to go from 1, negative 1 all the way to 5, negative 5. So on my delta math, if I'm graphing this first part, I'll go from 1, negative 1 to 5, negative 5. I just want that piece. The 1 is going to be included because it has an equal to sign. So that's going to be solid. But the 5 is not included. That has to be open because it doesn't have or equal to. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, putting the line in, so that's that blue line, it's the whole thing, and then it, highlighting the section we want, it's between 1 and 5. I don't know how to do a or equal to right there. Um, I think you probably have to go, oh, there you go, it's like that. See how that's a solid line and a dash? Anyway, that was just the first piece. So now let's look at the second piece. Remember, f of x equals negative 3. That just means that um, we ha we're going to have a horizontal line. You'll see it over here on Desmos. So f of x is equal to negative 3. We have a horizontal line at negative 3. But we just want it at x equals 5. Okay, so at x equals 5. So it's wherever these two meet. You see right there? At x equals 5 and y is equal to negative 3. Because the line's at negative 3 and then that's going to be a closed circle. So... Um, y is negative 3 and we want the x to be 5 so we put a point there so that was that second piece okay now let's just let's do the let's do the last piece how are we doing on time we're at 9 30 okay f of x is equal to x minus 13 again that's going to be a line f of x is equal to x minus 13 okay so that's the whole line right there that goes on forever and ever but we just want the piece where x is greater than 5 so we just want the piece where x is greater than 5. 
I don't, let's make that um, a different color. Let's make it orange. So notice how it's the shaded part is everything greater than five for X. And that goes on forever. It doesn't matter how many times I zoom out, it's gonna go on forever. So what we wanna do is we wanna start here at five, negative eight, and we wanna go to another point. It, it could be, you could use any point. I might use this one. This is six, negative seven. So five, negative eight, six, negative seven. Um, we're gonna do a line, five, negative eight. and six, negative seven. And we want this, remember that the shaded part, it goes to the right forever. So we need an arrow here to go to the right forever. And we don't want to include the five because it's not or equal to. Also on the graph, you see how these are dashed lines because it's not or equal to. So that's gonna be open. And I submit my answer. And that's correct. So see how I did that really quickly? Again, what I recommend is inputting the function into Desmos and then inputting the domain to see what section you need, okay? Hopefully that's helpful. I'm gonna keep it there at 11 minutes. Uh, right in the discussion below if you have any questions and uh, we'll keep working on this, okay? Thank you guys so much, bye-bye.